Today's guest is Mitch Earlywine. He is a professor of clinical psychology at SUNY Albany and an expert in humor and advertising. Now, I, I will say this disclaimer, the subject of humor is death to humor. We had this has to be done entirely deadpan, right? Dissect humor and it dies. Yeah, okay, so um, we'll have no fun or even a laugh. I doubt it. Nothing. Eighty percent of commercials, national commercials, it seems to me, are, are out for a punchline of one sort or another. Usually a punchline followed by a product shot and then a, a kicker punchline, which is sometimes even better than the first. Uh, maybe sixty percent of those are, are actually pretty funny. Yet, overall, I don't think any more than twenty or thirty percent of them, in my uh, experience, are, qualify as good advertising. Does that conform to your, your take on things? Definitely. At least 43 billion bucks are spent on ads that's supposed to be funny. Uh -huh. And I think what happens is even if they generate a laugh, it's often not a laugh that's relevant to a claim for the product, or it's an aggressive laugh rather than one that's affiliative, and so the dollar is misspent. Ooh. Uh, and this is, this is like the entire industry is 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 making us laugh and and hardly anyone's getting the payoff. Give me some, give me an example, a quintessential example of a funny ad that is funny, really in service of the brand. One of my favorites is the pot noodles campaign uh, in the UK. So here we've got basically these are crappy ramen noodles. Yeah, right? ramen noodles. That only slobs eat. Clearly an underground product, if you will. It's uh, getting caught eating them is like getting caught picking your nose, and they know it. So the ad has a guy sort of walking around a seedy neighborhood asking women in leather, do they pot noodles? He gets slapped, and then later you hear him in a, a bed with someone moaning and groaning and shows them eating pot noodles. And they're fessing up, hey, this is the kind of product we are, and the claim is in some ways kind of relevant to the product, and it worked really well. Mm, because they acknowledge their, their inner vulgarity. They do what comics call calling the room. We know we're underground, so we're going to admit it. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, other times people go to extreme lengths to make jokes, and uh, and the joke is hilarious, and in the but no business is done. There's you know nobody goes rushing to the store to buy that product because what they haven't even noticed what the product is being advertised. Sad but true. It can be so funny that uh, it interferes with the message, or funny but irrelevant to the claims of the product. So. There's a classic one where a woman on a blind date cuts this loud fart and later gets caught doing so, which is relatively funny in the way it's presented, but the product is a, a beeper. What does farting have to do with a beeper? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I remember seeing that ad, and I remember kind of going, <laughs> yeah, kind of in a bridesmaid's sort of embarrassing, funny way. And then, what? Beeper? What? No, it sounds like somebody... Uh, on the creative side had a joke that they really wanted to do a commercial on and they, they stuck it against the first client who would buy it, right? They'd, they'd probably been through various other clients who said, uh, yeah, no. And then they got the beeper people to sign off. That's a guess. And sad but true, if that had been for uh, an anti-gas medicine or uh, some kind of social skills training where you apologize for farting, it might have really worked. But unfortunately, with a beeper, it just doesn't. And sometimes the ad is just it's wrong on every level. Classically, the Super Bowl ad, it's about 15 years ago, it was for a retailer now out of business, substantially as a result of this ad, called Just For Feet. Uh, they were actually from, our, from our, our, your area in uh, upstate New York, and they took a Super Bowl ad. Obviously, you're selling sneakers, so you want to have a, a scenario where a bunch of white mercenaries in a military vehicle are out stalking a black Kenyan runner uh, barefoot uh, in accordance with thousands of years of Kenyan tradition, um, shooting him with, a, with a, a, a dart, rendering him unconscious, and putting shoes on him. I mean, it was such a disaster, I don't even know where to begin. But generally, we want affiliative humor. We want humor that's going to bring people together, not humor that's hostile towards somebody. And if you're going to be hostile towards an underrepresented group, Definitely don't do that on national television. It really was, I think, the beginning of, of the end for that company. Yeah, so I, uh, I saw this before the Super Bowl, and for the first time in my long career, 
actually called the agency, uh, which was in Rochester, New York. It was a Sachin Sachin Rochester, and said, hey, don't run that commercial. I don't know what it, run color bars. Do not put that ad on the Super Bowl because it's just going to be a colossal disaster. It's racist. It's neo-colonialist. It's, it's, it's cruel. It's unkind. And oh, by the way, not even remotely funny. I mean, there's nothing funny about, where's the joke? Where is the joke? And they said, no, we feel it's humorous. Uh, if someone says the word humorous in a sentence, do you, do you think it's reasonable to assume that they're, they're not going to be funny? Because even the word humorous isn't funny. Odds are high if it's got that many syllables, it's not going to crack a laugh. <laughs> so, uh, bottom line, your advice to the vast majority of advertisers who think that humor is the way to, to get and keep people's attention in a, in a universe where attention is always, always divided. If you can make it affiliative, so it brings people together, and you can make it relevant to the claims of your product, go for it. If you can't do that, go with a straightforward appeal. Yeah, and is that going to happen? I mean, let's, just between us, is anyone going to ever listen to you? Is there any evidence that they have? They've never listened to me in the past. Yeah, me neither. Okay, so you have to go. Uh, this is Bob Garfield. Thank you, Mitch Early Wine. Thank you for being here. Now I'll just I'll, I'll thank you further if you'll just if you'll just go.